we've had a contest to see who can come up with the best covered bridge design, paid people to participate, and are giving out a fabulous prize to the winner. However, on the way to this contest, we had a little bit of an issue. A rise in sea level in the middle of the judging. But let's go over the contest, how that was put together, take a look at the entries, and call out the winner. I think one of the best things, and one of the main things, a nice government should do in ECO is create opportunities for the players. Sometimes that requires applying a few constraints in order to provide an even greater opportunity, but overall you want to try to ensure all the skills on a server have a job. They have goals to be met, and perhaps even some challenges to overcome. Things to work towards. Which is what led to this contest. We've been building roads like crazy over the last four months on this server, and it's been great for several of the industries. The miners have been crushing a lot of rocks, the masons have been able to produce concrete, and the basic engineers have been able to construct asphalt roads. And as usual on our server, there's been opportunities for transporting large quantities of all these goods. But what's been left out of this frenzy of road building is the other primary industry that's based on wood. The loggers and lumberers have been left out of this government program that's been getting a lot of funding over time. To make the wood situation even worse, the increasing levels of pollution instituted a government payout for planting seeds to increase the absorption of CO2, which has led to a lot of tree cutting. And granted, the end result of planting the seeds is a net increase in the number of trees on the server, but it did leave us with an awful lot of logs laying around and very little to do with them. There's also a pretty significant industry in the game around the ores like iron, steel, and copper, and any government-funded use of those materials has also been lagging a little. So we created a contest and established criteria for what the design of covered bridges should consider. We had the judging criteria of aesthetics, functionality, broad use of materials, ease of replication, and the cost to the government, which was the least of our concerns, but still a factor that might weigh in if someone selected the absolute most expensive materials that are available. The aesthetics pretty much speaks for itself. It needed to look good. But because that is somewhat subjective, we used three judges to balance that out. Functionality was all about utility. Could you get any kind of vehicle through it? Was the bridge constructed in a way that made it narrow and more difficult to navigate? And for me, there was a consideration about the possibility of flooding, which mainly I was looking for a little sidewall construction on these covered bridges as well. The broad use of materials was a key criteria, because as I explained, this whole covered bridge contest and any subsequent building that would come of it was largely about extending opportunities across several other skills. There could still be a lot of stone involved, but it needed to have a significant inclusion of other materials for the other skills. Ease of replication had to do with how easy would it be for someone to look at this design and be able to continue with the construction for large stretches of roadway. It might be a great design, but if it was particularly complex and required a person to constantly be changing forms of a block and turning things this way and that, it needed to be taken into consideration. Not an eliminating factor, but something to think about. So how did we set up the actual contest in the game? We used the build law I covered in my last video and designated 10 different sites where the players could come and create a design for their entry. It wasn't absolutely necessary, but to help know exactly who was responsible for which build and ensure there was no tampering of designs between players, those build zones were overlaid with contract claims by the government. The players would start by going to the government contract board and accepting a contract for contest entry, which would give them permission to that build zone. We also had two different kinds of entries that we were looking at. One was for roads 15 blocks wide, 
and another for roads that was roughly 10 blocks wide. The judging criteria was posted and pinned on Discord so everyone would have an idea about what the judging criteria was, and off they went on their builds. It was as easy as that. This provided a great opportunity for existing players or brand new players to the server. Because the build law pays the players as they're laying each block, all a person would need is a handful of pocket change to buy their first few pieces of material to lay down. They'd get paid to cover the cost of the material with a little extra where they could buy even more material and keep going from there. So the players really couldn't lose out with this contest, with the built-in paid participation, as well as the two prizes of wind turbines that would be drawn at the end. So, given the criteria I talked about, we ranked each bridge against each criteria on a scale of 1 to 5, with 5 being the best, and then aggregated that scoring from all the judges. I'm going to take a couple minutes here and show you the entries for the 15 wide bridge entries and give you a chance to pick out your own winner out of these five entries. There were some really nice entries there, but it was on to the 10 wide bridge to take a look at those entries and do the same. See which one jumps out to you as a top selection among those five. There seemed to be a little less effort put into a couple of these entries, but I still appreciated everyone that participated. As I looked across all 10 entries, there were a couple things that I was really pleased to see that jumped out to me that would help with one of those primary criteria of spreading out skills. Some of these guys integrated clay pots or bits of furniture as benches along the side. A couple of them had electric lights, which would also really help with using copper wiring in the electronic skill area. And it was also nice to see some use of different mixed metals with the woods and other materials. The judging was a little harder than I thought it would be, but in the end, we did come up with a winner. The results are tabulated, and a clear winner was selected for the 15 wide and 10 wide entries. For the 15 wide winner, its simple old school design is reminiscent of the bridges of Madison County and features a simple mix of SEBA composite and corrugated steel, highlighted with side rails of lovely mortared stone and features clay pots filled with huckleberries. Easily duplicated, but never boring, this design goes to Squishnew as the winner of the 15 wide wind turtle. Moving on to the 10 wide winner, we have a lovely open and airy design that is also made of the same SEBA composite, accented with dark saguaro. Corrugated steel, mortared granite, and a touch of ashlar stone make this covered bridge stand out in the crowd. But its most exceptional feature is the framed glass linear cupola running the length of the ridge, giving this building belonging to Rob Sponsible the grand prize of the 10 wide wind turbine. My thanks goes out to all those that participated in the contest. And from here, we'll launch a whole series of builds to extend these designs the length of our bridges. And not even this water we're standing in is gonna stop this server. Just like nothing is going to stop you from liking and subscribing to follow this playthrough, as well as some other future planned games. Take care, and I'll be talking to you later.